Okay, I'm gonna hold up two phones here. One of these phones is a better seller and has better reviews than the other. Which one do you think it is? Well, you would assume that it would be this one, of course, because this one has better specs. This one has much weaker specs and a much lower price. And as you'd expect, this one is doing a lot better than this one. But Carl Pei, the guy who made this phone here, doesn't think that that's going to last for much longer. Is that true? Well, I want to talk about this. So over on LinkedIn, Carl Pei posted a very long uh, diatribe about the current RAM shortage happening in the tech industry. And his basic, some, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave a link to this so you can read it, but uh, it's, it's long and, and I'm not going to read the whole thing right here. But his basic premise is that the ongoing RAM shortage is a golden opportunity for a company like nothing. Nothing, which does not focus on specs and instead focuses on software, design, and user experience, nothing is going to do incredibly well, while all the other players who only focus on raw specs are going to struggle because they're going to have to raise their prices in response to the RAM shortage. So it's sort of grandstanding that we expect from Carl Pei, uh, but it's also presenting a new interesting concept of is the spec war over? Like, is the idea that a smartphone with better specs than another smartphone being better than, you know, than that phone, is that still true today? So let's talk about this, you know, from a macro standpoint. So before I go into this, though, uh, let's talk about the RAM shortage really quickly, just in case you're, you're not up to speed on this. So uh, I'm going to leave a link here, but there's an actual, there's actually already a Wikipedia article about the uh, ongoing RAM shortage in 2026. Uh, basic summary is that uh, selling RAM and selling the uh, the silicon that uh, that creates RAM to AI data centers is far more lucrative than selling it to anyone else. So every company that makes RAM, of which are there are not many, uh, are pre-allocating all of their RAM supplies to these AI data centers that are being built. This means that the price of RAM is going up because the demand is very high and the, uh, the supply is very low. So yeah, that's creating a big problem. Now, smartphones, uh, smartphone companies that have traditionally relied on RAM to be super inexpensive are now having to deal with the idea that it's not super inexpensive anymore, and this is going to inevitably raise prices for phones in 2026. It may not, it may not happen tomorrow, it's, but, it, but it's happening. And uh, it's also going to happen for other things that use RAM, which is pretty much everything from tablets to uh, smartwatches to laptops, pretty much everything is gonna go up in price at some point. And you can thank all those AI data centers for that. So anyway, that's the basics of what's going on with the RAM shortage. So now what Carl Pei is saying is that this is a golden opportunity for nothing. Uh, because the RAM shortage is going to affect everyone in the industry, the companies that are already focused on the other things that are not spec-based, like design, software, and uh, user experience, they're going to do a lot better. So, you know, that's certainly a theory. But uh, this is, is ignoring three big problems, and Carl needs to sort of understand these problems a little bit better. Uh, so first off is that uh, on-device AI requires a lot of RAM. That's the flat out, that's, that is a fact. Like if you want to have an effective on-device AI experience on your smartphone, your phone needs to have a lot of RAM. That's why we saw uh, in 2025, a lot of the pro level phones and the ultra phones and things like that coming with you know 16 gigabytes of RAM because the companies know that AI is going to be a huge deal and you need a lot of RAM. Uh, why is this? There, there's a great article, TechWriter did a great article about why uh, RAM is so important for AI. I'm not gonna explain the whole thing. I'll leave a link to this article in the description, but uh, this explains you know, why RAM is so important, what RAM does, what RAM, why RAM is important to the AI experience and all that. So, uh, so I'll leave that there. But, but the, Carl and Nothing 
are also really into a on device AI. The nothing phones, not, not this one. This, this phone doesn't have it, but the more recent nothing phones have the essential key, which is basically a hot key to go into the nothing, uh, AI experience where you can do all sorts of AI based things. So nothing is totally into on device, on device AI. And for that to work well, it needs a lot of RAM. So I don't understand why Carl thinks he's not, you know, he's absolved of that problem because he's definitely not. If he wants to continue to invest in the AI experiences that nothing is so far very, very invested in, he's going to need RAM. So I don't, I don't know why he thinks that he's not, you know, that, that he can just ignore that. Uh, so the other problem is that uh, nothing's core audience does care about specs. Uh, that is, you can just see that by looking at the reviews for the Nothing Phone 3. So if you don't remember, the Nothing Phone 3 was hyped up by Nothing as being the first true flagship from the company. That's the term that Carl and the team at Nothing used over and over again, true flagship. And when the phone came out, it turned out that it was not a true flagship because it lacked a lot of the specs that make a true flagship. Going back to this analogy here, where you know this phone is a true flagship because it has all the flagship specs, and this phone is not. This is not the Nothing Phone 3, but use your imagination for me holding the Nothing Phone 3 there. There's a big difference between them, and the specs is what it comes down to. And the Nothing users really, really care about this, whether Carl likes to admit it or not. So just as an example here, going over to the Nothing Phone, or sorry, the Nothing community on Reddit, uh, this is one of the top posts that's on. On there right now. It's this cute meme with the, the three silly dragons and uh, talking about the Nothing Phone 3. They're saying that the design is stupid, the price is stupid, and the hardware is stupid. So this is Nothing's own community. This is the Nothing subreddit. And this is a very popular post with, you know, thousands of upvotes that, you know, people are very much not happy with the Nothing Phone 3. And the reason is because of the specs, it's not because of the design. Well, I guess the design is a little bit of it, but it's certainly not because of the software and the user experience. The software and the user experience on the Nothing Phone 3 and all Nothing Phones is actually really good. Carl is definitely right there, but Carl likes to think that his audience doesn't care about specs, but they do. You just go to your own subreddit, Carl, and you'll see that they very much do. So I don't really know what Carl's thinking on as far as that goes. Um, and then the third problem that Carl is ignoring with this whole situation is that larger companies, and when I say larger, I mean Samsung, Google, uh, Oppo, uh, Honor, you know, the, the big smartphone companies out there, uh, they can, they can deal. Like, they can absolutely deal with, with eating some of those costs. They can also deal with raising prices. You know, Samsung releases the Galaxy S26. If it's a hundred dollars more expensive than it previously was, Samsung fans will be upset about that, but they're still going to buy the phone. You know, the phone's still going to sell well. Samsung phones are in every single carrier store here in the United States, and they're the de facto phone that people buy if they're not buying an iPhone. So Samsung could raise those prices by 50 to to $100, and they'll still sell just fine. So nothing, though, cannot do that. Nothing is not in that privileged position where it can raise the prices significantly to accommodate the uptick in RAM costs and still have an audience that's going to continue to buy their phones. So yeah, these are three in very, very significant issues that Carl just seems to be ignoring with this, this long post here about how, you know, the RAM shortage is, is a golden opportunity for the Nothing brand. So I think that Carl's kind of mistaken in, in, in this realm. Um, and I also think that his, his final argument here down here, which is 2026 is the year the specs race ends. I don't think that's true either. Um, I agree with the core sentiment that specs aren't everything. I've always agreed with that. I've always thought that, you know, there's much more to a great phone than just the specs. You know, the Galaxy S25 Ultra is a great phone because it has great specs, but it's also a great phone because it has a user experience that's really good. It has tons of repair options. You know, you can go to pretty much any carrier store and get your phone fixed because you have a Samsung. Uh, there are cases all over the place. It gets frequent updates. There's tons of software features that people really appreciate. Like, yes, there are a lot of things about this phone that make it good that aren't just the specs on paper. 
but also the specs on paper are what make people want to buy this phone. So the specs race isn't over, it's just less dramatic now. 10 years ago, like if you released a phone with, you know, some mediocre camera specs, the camera was basically unusable. Now, if you release a phone with mid-range cameras, the cameras are still going to be great. Like, yeah, they're not going to be as good as something that you would get if you spent $1,200 on your phone, but it's still going to be good enough. And so, yeah, the specs race has kind of dimmed down a bit, but it's still there. And I think that anyone who says that specs, you know, the specs race ends is, is pretty delusional. I don't think that this is actually, actually how it's going to go. People are still going to care about specs and they will continue to care about specs for a long time. Um, yeah, so uh, I do think, I do agree that with Carl in the sense that nothing is in a good position uh, to deal with this in the sense that their, their user experience is really good, their software is really good, and their design is really good. I know the Nothing Phone 3 design was quite controversial, but I think that the core idea of Nothing's design ethos is really good. It's unique, it's different, it appeals to a certain type of demographic. So yes, I will agree that Nothing is, is in a good position there. But uh, yeah, thinking that the specs race is over, or thinking that you can just skirt away this RAM shortage problem, is, is very strange. So anyway, uh, what do you guys think? Jump down in the comments and let me know what you think about the ongoing RAM shortage, about Carl Pay's statement here about the specs race, whether or not you think the specs of these two phones actually still matter, and uh, and yeah, your thoughts about whether or not, you know, the uh, the specs race is going to continue in, in the way that it has for the past, you know, 20 years, or if this year really is the end of that. Uh, so yeah, jump down in the comments and let me know what your thoughts are. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.